An Introduction to Chapter 5 A Historical View on Sustainable Development What is sustainable development? There are different definitions of sustainable development, but the most well-known is the Brundtland definition, which was originally coined by the United Nations in 1987. They define sustainable development as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. What motivated the United Nations in the 1980s to look into the possibilities of sustainable development? The interest in sustainable development that commenced in the 1970s was directly related to the population and welfare growth that occurred since the 1940s. It became clear that long-term growth was akin to an impossible dream. The Population Bomb of 1968, written by Paul Ehrlich, was one of the books that provided the wake-up call. He forecast population growth for future decades and predicated a breakdown in the world's ability to feed itself. Four years later, in 1972, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology published a scientifically groundbreaking report, The Limits to Growth. Using computer simulations, they forecast things such as industrial output, food production, and the availability of resources. More and more citizens and politicians came to realize that economic growth without sustainability was a dead-end street. Why is 1987 an important year in the history of sustainable development? The attendance to the theme of sustainable development is comparatively young, and it wasn't a widespread political agenda item in the early days. You can consider the 80s as the starting point when the UN published the report Our Common Future under the supervision of Gro Harlem Brundtland. The world community began to realize that development based on the pillars economic and social has its limitations. Sustainability is crucial and environmental considerations have to be taken into account. As such, the building needs a third pillar. To give substance to this responsibility, the UN set up the International Panel on Climate Change in 1988. The organization functions as a neutral scientific research institute. The office is based in Switzerland, and they work together with thousands of scientists from all over the world. For the world community, it is quite unique that there is a neutral authority which determines the condition of the Earth every five years. It is also important that the panel's works are scientifically proven, so countries can't neglect their findings, and they could use them as a basis for worldwide agreements. What steps have the world community taken since 1987? Well, in 1997, the Kyoto Protocol was signed, as all the countries of the world aim to combat the emission of greenhouse gases. It must be concluded, however, that many countries have not achieved these objectives because insufficient investments have been made in reducing emissions. The hopes are now pinned on the Paris Agreement of 2015. Many countries promise to work on the objectives of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. If this succeeds, global temperature rise this century should remain below 2 degrees Celsius. Should it be noted that the world has hardly made any progress when it comes to sustainable development? There is progress when it comes to the other two pillars of sustainable development, especially in the countries of Asia and South America, which have experienced high economic growth. Also, progress has been made when it comes to the social pillar. For this pillar... Kofi Annan, former Secretary General of the United Nations, has made an important contribution. In 2000, he provided the initiative for the report, We the Peoples, the Role of the United Nations in the 21st Century. This report has given rise to more alignment of countries when it comes to social policy. In 2005, the World Summit was finally held and 189 countries began working on the Millennium Development Goals. Since then, more countries have formulated concrete policies in areas such as poverty, health, education, and gender equality.
in different areas there is progress made in the last ten years. For example, the percentage of people having less than two dollars a day decreased by thirty nine percent, and child mortality is fifteen percent lower. However, progressive steps in the field of greenhouse gases and climate changes are still a challenge. The transition to sustainable energy requires an ambitious government to implement new regulations and tax systems to get more greening industries and consumption. At this moment, more than 20 countries have lower emissions than in 2000. However, it should be noted that we are not yet close to the turning point for greenhouse gases. Still, each year, more CO2 is emitted than the year before.